Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Land, please abiding by Zagatrith Plus, where we just had a great run as Lazarus. You know what? We just got the razor on Eve. Let's try to... Eve is like... I don't want to say almost done. What is that far right thing on the post-it anyway? It must be Delirium. Yeah, because I've only got it done with a couple of people. Wait, no, 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 no. I am an idiot. I am a moron man. Last episode, I looked at Lazarus' uh, post-it note and I said, Oh, we've already done the hush fight. No, we haven't. We did boss rush. Boss rush is the star. Then the, the teardrop emoji is delirium. And the far right is hush? No, the far right is delirium and the bottom right is hush? Anyway, we're going to play as Eve. We have to do... The entire negative side, so shoal into the dark room, and or the void, K98BSS70. Excuse me. Excuse me. Eve's supposed to start with the razor blade now. Excuse. Th can you hear me? I want to call it off. Eve was supposed. That's the whole reason I'm doing the Eve run here, is that my girl was supposed to start with the razor blade. I thought we unlocked that. Doing greed or something? I can't remember how we... I don't know. Look, it doesn't matter too much in the whole scheme of things. We'll survive here. And it's all we... Oh, jeez. Yeah, I mean, that you don't need a razor blade if you just, uh, you know, take damage against the champion right off the bat. It's like the easiest way to enable the uh, transformation here. Monstro's Lung. If you have the stat screen up and you pick up Monstro's Lung for the first time, you probably are like, this is a total ripoff. In actuality, it's like one of the most fun items in my opinion, that the game has to offer and, you know, magnifies any tear effects that you can associate with it. The thing is, like, we, we probably actually want to get that HP, but I am a slave for you. I can't deny it. I ain't trying to hide it. And by, for you, in this case, I specifically mean for high damage. So, I really don't want to get rid of poor Babylon unless we get something out of it. And, and we did get something out of it in the form of the Halo. Basically, we got more HP, which is useful. You know, a, an early HP upgrade to grab some deal with the devil uh, fuel is is positive. Have we done Mega Satan as Eve? I, I thought we had almost, you know, exhausted this post-it, so I imagine we probably have. Yeah, we have. So we don't we, we can take a deal with the devil pretty much guilt-free without worrying about how it's... Uh, Excuse me, sir. Without worrying about how it affects our, our prospects here. We're, we're pretty much rolling. Monstro's Lung doesn't win the game by itself, but it, it unveils a lot of synergies. That I think could be uh, positive for us here. I got a sneeze and a half. I can feel it just behind, like, the, the, something in my nasal, feral... Pharyngal. Look, I'm not a doctor. Ah, I really thought we could sneeze there. You know, there's a little... Once you get inside of the human skull, as far as I'm concerned, for me, it's just like... I don't even... I don't know what's what. There's just goo, two eyeballs, and a brain in there somewhere. Got the finger, which is a, a pretty positive... Uh, item for us to grab here. The finger, little... Like, do I know... Because I never use it properly. That it's actually basically a form of piercing shot. And and also spectral tears. Like it goes over uh, rocks. It goes through enemies like these, these stone men here from High Valyria. We got nothing to worry about. As long as we can use that appropriately. I kind of want to try for a little secret room action. We got it. Which means that we are going to gain access. Wow. First off to quite a lot of money. And secondly... Quite a lot of money. Secondly, to this uh, curse room in here that's given me spirit heart. I want to be careful, but, but shrewd here. I think we want to do it like this. Now that we have a spirit heart, let's uh, take advantage of this. Get Whore of Babylon working for us. We didn't enter. Uh, you're right, we didn't enter that way. Um, I can't recall if finger scales with damage, but I believe that it does. You know what would be like, oh, is this even in our version of the game yet? Like, we might not have unlocked it. If we can get uh, Eye of Belial. It's the Eye of Belial. It's poison in one bite. 
Please look out, I am an excellent fighter. BFF's not bad. Um, but yeah, oh! Barricano. Barricano. If we can get, uh... Oh my god. Hagalas. That's not a great one. If we can get, uh, I have Belial to get, uh, piercing shots with Monstro's Lung, we're like already extraordinarily rolling. What's the point of Chaos card? Don't hate me for this, but I think on an average run, Chaos might be like one of the most overrated cards. It's also simultaneously very good. The, the, it kind of runs into the credit card problem, is all I'm gonna suggest. And the credit card problem is, is merely that... So we verped our last remaining pill, which is verp. So if we get a good pill, we can double up. Lock up is not that bad. And we got two verps. So we might as well verp a lock up. And then let's verp another lock up. And then we'll try our luck with this last pill. Yeah, yeah, that was a smart call. So we got up to three luck as a result of that. Um, it's a great card, but it, it suffers from being too good to use. Now, if you're going to fight Mega Satan and you get this card, you're like the luckiest person on Earth. But if you're just holding on to it and wondering when to use it, it does have an opportunity cost. Like, it takes up a slot uh, the whole time that you're holding it. So, yeah, I would love to, you know, go to the Hush fight and crush the second phase of Hush with this Chaos card. And I'll, I'll probably plan on doing so. It is probably worth saving until that point, but for now, who knows, dude. It's like, if imagine if in real life, you had the ability, and I think this would be terrible legislation. I would forgo, like, all of my political principles to vote for whatever party opposed this legislation. But imagine if you had, like, one crime. You could just do one crime, any crime, uh, and you would, uh, you know, one of them would get you'd get off automatically. You could use your get out of jail free card. By the way, if you're saying, why wouldn't I just do a murder? You're a terrible person. <laughs> if the law's the only thing stopping you from murdering people, you need to take a deep look uh, inside yourself and examine things. Well, I want to get the most value out of my get out of jail free card. No, that's, you know, robbing a bank, maybe. Oh no, did I ruin? I did ruin Horror of Babylon. Murdering somebody, that's tough. We're not here, you know, your money is federally insured, etc., etc. Either way, I'm not saying you're not a terrible person, by the way, if you're like, well, I'll just rob a bank. I'm just saying more so than murder. That should be, like, your first pick, I think. Um, okay, let's use a bomb. Well, anyway, the whole point of that, like, part of the conversation was the idea that you might think that that would make you more likely to do the crime, and I think that there's something to be said about that, but I think you'd also, like, at least I would, go through life, probably die at the age of 80, still being like, I don't know if it's worth using the get-out-of-jail-free card yet. You know, it's like, like, chaos. If, if I'm being honest with you, and this is not even messing 0%, which is a double negative, so I'm, I'm messing with you literally 0% right now. It's probably the smart money to use the chaos card on this guy right here, just to make sure we get some use out of it. Because let me let me paint a picture for you. What if we end up getting a, a Yara rune before we fight Hush, assuming we can even make it to the Hush fight here? What do we take with us? The Yara rune or the chaos card? Nobody knows. So we're still not at Horror of Babylon uh, enabling here. I wonder if, if the Google DeepMind algorithm to, can scan for the word whore, in which case, I've really got to start calling it, like, Lady of Babylon. Which might seem like it's being deeply misogynistic on my part. I'm just trying to find a name that, you know, is indicative of what the item does. I'm not suggesting, of course, so it's not... I don't hold that troubling attitude. What we're going to do here is look for an item room and change the topic of conversation. Shot speed is like infinity per second here. It's actually pretty good with uh, Monstro's Lung, to be honest with you. Finger, uh, I don't know if the damage from Finger, this is why we need spider Bot, but I don't know if the damage from Finger is doubled as a result of BFF at range. I'm assuming if the Finger collides with an enemy, if it even does melee damage, which maybe it just does the range damage up close. Um, 
then it, it, it might get the benefit of it, but I'm not certain. You might think that this run is, is not looking that hot right now. Oh, that was pretty dumb of me. I, I very much disagree, to be honest with you. I think this run is fantastic. I think we just happened upon a room that is, like, the worst possible candidate for uh, our present skill set, so... Still got an item room on this floor, not sweating it too much. I'm still on a little bit of a, an Isaac high from the uh, from the uh, last run as well. That Lazarus run was like actually a 10 out of 10. Please, please, sir, please, thank you. Now that we've got unlimited bombs, that would have been helpful a moment ago, but life goes on. Anyway, we're holding it together here. I know there's that fairly famous Patton Oswalt bit about, you know, when you turn like a certain age, you should be able to, you know, get away with crimes. It's a funny joke, but I disagree with it. I wonder if we've ever taken Curse of the Tower. I bet we have, because I know myself. We need to- oh god, I tried to use black powder. Um, we need to take it, but... The, the gist of that joke, you know, it starts out with the idea that birthdays are... I'm not going to tell the joke o over again because it's like, you, you ever try to explain a stand-up bit that's funny to somebody? And then he goes like, blah, 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 well, you got to be there to s But, you know, the, the gist of that bit is that, you know, your birthdays stop mattering or stop being worth celebrating when you're over the age of, like, 21. After that, it's like every, uh, every 10 years you get a birthday. I agree with that. I disagree with the idea, and I think so does he, that when you reach a certain age... You should be able to legally commit murder, but, um, you know, that's, he, he's a comedian. He's gonna be telling jokes, probably, is the idea. Is my expectation, at least I wouldn't know, because I've never laughed in my life. So we're at full red hearts, that stinks. But what's great is that... If we start to lose HP, we can now use, like, Whore Babylon to be an indicator of how much HP we have, although we're done with this floor regardless, so. Figured we just try to maximize our potential here, check this out, we got a semi-useful spacebar item. It's only semi-useful right now, but it's okay, we'll take a quick peek for pills or magic mushies. And actually, with unlimited bombs. Hear, hear me out here, blow myself up. Did not activate Horror Babylon. Not a big fan. Grab this. Use it. Power pill. No, 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 I actually don't want that. Please don't kill me here. I bought a pill by accident. That was so... Oh, I'm a moron. Um, I wanted to buy a spirit heart. This won't kill me. No Horror Babylon? Now we have Horror Babylon, so we're like low on HP. We bought a Spirit Heart. I actually think I would love to buy two Spirit Hearts at the cost of maybe no arcade on the next floor. We didn't get a second Spirit Heart. We did get a health upgrade pill. Kind of the opposite of what we want. That might seem like a terrible idea. It may be a terrible idea, but what it has done is given us the damage necessary with a little bit of protection on top of it to hopefully um, take advantage of our relatively good... Uh, Damage and, and, and other stats here to not take more damage in the future. It's the idea, at least. Uh, we also... Picked up Mom's Bottle of Pills at half price, which... That, that's a half price item as far as I'm concerned. I'm pretty stoked because... We know there's a health upgrade in our rotation, which is good even if we don't want to use it as HP. We can always use it as a deal with the devil fuel, as I say. Um, but then beyond that... I only picked it up because I knew there was a luck up in the rotation, so I figured that that's enough to sway me. If we know about two pills, one of them's neutral and one of them's good, sure. If we got no better spacebar item, it's a lot of conditions on this, but give me uh, give, give me mom's bottle of pills and I'm a happy camper. Buy another spirit heart, keep ourselves safe here. PhD is kind of bad, but I'll accept the cost. Uh, it, I mean, it's great, but it's bad for you as Eve. But I'll accept the cost here, because uh, in the future, it could be worth a lot. Right now, it's it's a pretty big negative, honestly, but... 
With mom's bottle of pills, you gotta go for the long-term synergy. And you know, the more Isaac I play, the more I'm like, Eve is a fun character because of that trade-off. Oftentimes, you know, the way Ed described it is it's so good. He liked, uh, and this was like three years ago or something, but he liked playing as Eve. Because the trade-off of like, should you trade HP for damage is interesting. I agree, that's interesting, but it's also, oh my god, stop relying on the finger as if it's an orbital. Uh, it's also kind of old hat at this point, you know, we've been down that road more times than we care to admit. Um, what's way more interesting is the idea of these situations, at least to me it's more interesting, the idea of these situations that are like, should I trade away my existing worth for more potential in the future? That's kind of a cool trade for me, because at some point you gotta say, you know what, no, this good item uh, is bad for me because it makes me worse now, even if it makes me potentially a little better later. Or you just ride that train like the whole way, but it can have consequences as well. This would be a great time to beat the odds. Get a deal with the devil. No such luck. Might as well take the HP. Still on pace for boss rush. Chaos doesn't do anything for boss rush. It's not like a big positive there. Um, gotta try. First things first, 1.53 speed, go through that. Yeah, okay, in the end this is like very worth it I think for the spirit heart alone. Which I will pick up thusly, okay, good, 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 good. But yeah, this is, it's a little bit, uh, of a rude awakening after the Lazarus run. The Lazarus run is like the worst kind of run, not that I'm complaining. It's the worst kind of run to have to start your recording day if you're planning on recording like eight Isaac episodes because it just gives you the keys to the kingdom right off the bat. You get like Isaac affluenza. You know, when you when you start a run that strong, you never learn what it's like to be down in the trenches, you know, fighting for damage. Now, you may argue after 2300 hours in Steam of playing uh, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth and then, you know, probably like a thousand plus of the original version of the game, uh, we should probably have internalized that lesson and to that I say, who are you? Like, you know, my headmaster? I never went to a school with a headmaster. I went to, uh, the schools I went to barely had a principal, dude. And when we went there, we didn't have any principles. It was both ways. No, I didn't walk there both ways in the snow. I took a bus. But I had to wake up pretty early to get on the bus. That's a terrible place to stand. There goes our deal with the devil chance. The curses of the unknown. I'm not going to say that they're what's, what's beating me up the most here, but come on, man. I'd like to be able to see how much HP I have. I think that's a universal right. A universal right of Isaac. You have Everybody has the right to one damage upgrade before the Caves Part 2 is over. Everybody has the right to see how much HP they have. Everybody has the right to have either a Curse of the Maze or a Curse of the Lost, but not both, with the one exception being the Ultra Hard Challenge. How are you not deceased? Very, very good. I'm actually going to take this opportunity, because I think Boss Rush is basically a, an unrealistic pipe dream right now. I'm going to take this opportunity to head back and go to the Curse Room and sack a Spirit Heart for the for the right to do so. Ah, this is good. So we, we know we have one and a half Spirit Hearts at least. I think at most, actually, as well. But let us... I should have taken Wishbone a couple floors ago. Let us get down to the Horror of Babylon state here. There we go. So we have one full heart left right now. We could even play it a little bit more if we wanted to, but I don't think that'll be necessary. We'll take Roid Rage. And we now have one Spirit Heart remaining with one Red Heart to back it up. So we should be cautious, but simultaneously, simultaneously like pretty happy about the way that this is going. Almost dodged right into that. Two speed is a, it's a liability sometimes. Yes. Probably the best bad gas pill I've ever used. No! Alright, there goes Horror Babylon. But! Technology zero plus Monstro's Lung. Now you're speaking my language. 
would be better if not all of our shots, uh, you know, hit his skull and then dissipated. But maybe I should stop aiming at the skull if I'm going to complain about it. Uh, now if we can get, I mean, again, Belial tears are like 10 out of 10. But if we could get uh, any form of piercing shot, your boy would be an extremely happy camper. Worth it. Okay. Bounce out of this room. What we need to see now is uh, the shop. And ideally, like, if we could stop walking into enemies, that'd be good. Mom's toenail is a, a 0 out of 10 trinket masquerading as, like, a 9 out of 10 trinket. Don't believe it's lies. Here's all you need to know. It's Dan Giesling's favorite trinket. When was the last time you watched Dan Giesling play The Binding of Isaac Rebirth? 1991? Dude's fully invested on PUBG right now. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Play it a lot myself. It's a great game. But what do you think about the micro... Look. I can understand being cynical about a lot of games. And I can understand being cynical about PUBG. I really can, even though you're like, well, you're just saying that. No, 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 I'm, I'm being... I'm being honest with you. I'm actually going to use the sun card here. Oh, dude, this is perfect. Do we still want to use the sun card, though? I mean, we could use it to get full HP and then come back and play this dude. That took a red heart, even though it might not have looked like it. Um... But PUBG is also really fun. And whenever people are like, but what does it mean for the industry? I'm like, what are you in the industry for, dude? I'm in the industry. I'm worried about the trend of like loot boxes as, uh, as gambling. That's why we rag on them in the series all the time for saying they're never going to have loot boxes. And then all of a sudden, they have loot boxes and they say like, well, we're trying to fund the prize pool for our tournament. My dog, you sold like 11 million copies of your game. You can't fund a, a prize pool for your tournament? And now that's ignorant of business. I don't think it is. I think <laughs> it's like the International, you know? Although the International, for some reason, I'm like cool with them funding it. Maybe because you get the experience bonus. But anyway, I, I digress. But in the end, PUBG is such a fun game to play with friends that when people are cynical about it, I'm like... Dude, what do you want out of this? Would you want it to be like a, you know, physics-based puzzle platformer instead? It's crushing it. It gives me, it reminds me of being 16 and like coming home with my friends. It, well, not with my friends. I live in the suburbs. But um, coming home and talking to my friends and being like, let's play some Halo 2. It, it distills the, the experience of the video gaming industry. Is it art? No. It's, uh... It's actually like the opposite of art. I'm trying to think of like a good uh, movie comparison. Because it is it is not like a Darren Aronofsky film. It's like a really, really well-made Fast and the Furious. Just because, uh, you know, it's not intended to be high-minded art. And I'm the most pretentious person on the NLSS, probably. So for me to say this, I think, means something, hopefully. Um, just because it's not high art doesn't mean it's, you know, not a worthwhile endeavor. Sometimes you have to be very smart to make stupid things, and sometimes stupid things are extremely enjoyable. So I think that was the right math on this. We got quite a lot of money. We're not going to make boss rush, and that's okay. Um, let's keep moving here. Eh, tempting. <laughs> we know it's bad gas. Perks. I mean, Potentially, but not quite good enough. By the way, don't think this is like, oh, I'm not allowed to like PUBG. If you don't like PUBG, that's fine. But if any time... <laughs> it sounds like I'm specifically like sub-talking Nick here. That's not my intention. There are dozens of you out there. But if any time it gets mentioned, you're like, why do people like this game? It's because it's fun, dog. Not everything's like an international conspiracy to... To dislike or to, like to like something that you don't like specifically to, to single you out. And I want to go a little bit further. I think we're living particularly right now in an era where to be aloof is, uh, is seen as a positive thing. And I disagree with this. Um, the reason people like it is because it's fun. And just because you don't like something. You, you can never be above someone on an intellectual level specifically by not liking a piece of media. And I want to make that clear. The one exception is Transformers. <laughs> if you don't like the Transformers movies, 
You do have, you got like one extra point in intellect versus people who like them, but they could beat you. They might also have their masters in chemical engineering and that's like 40 points, okay? So like just, it's one point. It's 2.5% as much as having a degree in chemical engineering by the, in the NL scale at least. But um, I, I hate to see, because I was part of the generation that did this, you know, 10 years ago. I hate to see people judging other people or building themselves up by specifically cultivating an identity of what they don't like. It's the lamest... As, as a teenager, it's actually no problem, and I don't say that to demean the teenagers watching this. But, you know, you're... You got a you got a case. You're figuring out your identity. If your identity is like, I'm the guy who doesn't like Radiohead. Go for it, dude. You'll you'll work it out. I mean, I, I, OK Computer is an all-time classic, and you know your mileage may vary with respect to Kid A and Amnesiac, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but I, I disagree with you. But I agree with your right to say it. As an adult, is the lamest thing ever. If if 99% of the time you're talking about something, you're going, I don't like this. People are gonna start to wonder, like. You know, it's it's way easier to be the dude who naysays than to be the dude who yaysays. And I've been saying this for years, but if you're the dude who always naysays, and I think this applies to YouTube as well in a big way, and it's a guiding philosophy for like the Let's Look At series, much, much to my commercial detriment, by the way, but um, if you're the guy who always naysays, people are like, he's being honest, because there's no reason for him to lie about how bad something is. There's always a reason to lie about how good something is. People are way more cynical if you're positive. If you give a great game an eight out of 10, people will be like, how much did the publisher pay you? If you give a, a great game like a five out of 10, people are like, he's a discerning customer. Well, maybe, maybe not. There's also, I think there's a case to be made for the idea that you know, being negative is commercially a, a positive thing for a lot of people, even if it can sometimes become a little dishonest. I'm not singling out anybody in particular here. Nor, nor would I go over the top and suggest that people who are frequently negative are necessarily not giving you their honest opinion. I'm just saying, to, to be a naysayer as a... And everybody's got honest criticisms of something. I'm, I'm very much Switzerlanding myself here, which is a cool thing, I think. Being quite neutral in the situation, but... If you're always a naysayer, if you're like, that thing that people like, I don't like it! For me, I'm like, that's wicked lame. You don't have to like everything that other people like, but... You know, you start to notice a trend, I think, of cultivating uh, an image of being above things that the masses like. You know, some things the masses like are kind of garbage. I'll, I'll level with you a million percent on that. By the way, nine lives, big pickup. NL, what are you talking about? Talk about Isaac. No! Is episode eight million of this series. I'm getting on a soapbox and destroying everything I've worked for. Um, I still have this chaos card, which is very stunning to me, by the way. I think we might be able to make the hush fight. And we have 99 cents, so it would be a good thing to do. Oh, thank God for the range upgrade. Um, like, there's some trash music out there. I listen to the radio. Some of it's garbage. I don't think it's objectively garbage, but definitely, I am the kind of guy where probably if I'm listening to top 40 radio, like 80% of what comes on, I'm like, I'm not a big fan. I don't go on Twitter and go, how can the idiots blah blah blah, why doesn't everybody listen to Spider-Land by Slint, it's a blah blah, you know, but still. Um, I think everybody's got like an industry that they're kind of like that with, but... All I'm saying is that I'm, I'm no better than the other average person. That's the key to the soapbox, is you get on the soapbox, and you admonish other people, and then at the end you tie it in. You get like all these free shots in, and then at the end you go, Oh, you can't criticize me because I'm aware of the fact that I'm an idiot. That's how, see? And then this is even meta, because I'm telling you that I'm aware of the fact that I'm aware of it. And it's, uh, oh no, I've gone cross-eyed again. But I, this is, and I've, I think I've done this tangent at least once before, probably like two years ago. But if, if you're out there, you might be like a, you know, 15-year-old version of me right now, and you're like, oh, you're gonna go see uh, Mother this weekend. Uh, it looks all right, a little pedantic, but uh, Darren Aronofsky really peaked with Pi, his 1998 student. That's fine, but 
eventually people are going to stop asking you for your opinion because they already know it in advance. How do you feel about X? I don't like it. Why not? I haven't seen it yet, really, but uh, it's Pitchfork Media gave it a, you know, you get the idea. And that's what I try to do with Let's Look At, is if stuff is bad, I just, uh, I, I'm way less likely to cover it. Because I think there's so many games on Steam in, in today's day and age. We're definitely gonna make the hush fight, by the way. And this, we're not talking about Isaac anymore. You might think that it's dishonest to, like, scuttle coverage if something is not very good. But I, I very much disagree. If, if I was IGN and I was like, eh, I don't like Destiny 2, I'm not gonna review it. <laughs> Out of respect for Bungie. I think that would be a bad sign. But let's look at it, is not really meant to be, uh, is this game good, is this game bad? At least in its present state. It's more like highlighting cool stuff that I've played on Steam. Because with 20 games coming out a day, I don't necessarily know... Oh, we're definitely going to fight Hush, yes. I don't necessarily know if you need to be like, Hey, here's a game that just came out. You may or may not have ever heard of it, but it's bad, so don't buy it. You're already probably not going to buy it, because you may not know that it exists. Now, there are exceptions. You know, if, if Isaac 2 came out and it sucked, I would definitely have to be the guy... That would be like, I gotta do a video on this. Here's what I don't like about it. But if it's like, you know, one man indie team comes out with a game, looks cool, is not cool, but is also not making any waves, just kind of feels like punching down to be like, hey, I played this game and I don't like it. Anyway, let's donate a bunch of money here. You may disagree with that, by the way. And you, you may even very much vehemently disagree with it. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. The NLSS is where we oftentimes end up playing stuff that's come out that nobody's heard of that ends up being bad and we kind of poke fun at it. So I do still have an outlet for that. It's not like I'm just, you know, scuttling all coverage that, that might be funny. Because I know people are going to be like, Yo, you're missing out on the humor value of it. I do understand where you're coming from there. But what I would, what I would pass on to you is that, um, you know, being kind of like ironically detached from stuff and being above everything that other people like... It's a, it's a shortcut, get dusted, hush. It's a shortcut uh, for looking intelligent, but as you get older, people are way more interested in talking to people who, uh, who are passionate, you know, who are like, yeah, I work in uh, human resources, how is it? Ooh, this stinks. No, they don't want that. They want, they want to talk to the dude who's like, I work in human resources, how is it? It's super cool, let me tell you all the cool things about my job. It's lame to be excited about anything. Get that trash out of here. And also, I dropped my controller, and then I caught it. Um, that's that's an attitude for, like, a, that works when you're 15. And no, there's nothing against it. If it works, you know, smoke it while you got it, right? Once you get to college, people are like, how's Orgo? You enjoying organic chemistry? If you're, if you're not enjoying it, be honest. But if you are enjoying it, dude, step up. Oh, I love trying to figure out what... Uh, molecules are chiral versions of other ones. Chiral. Sulfates! I'm giving you life advice. I, I shouldn't be, because, as I always say, you shouldn't take life advice from a 28-year-old. That's how you get yourself into trouble. Very few people, you know, on their death, deathbeds are like, I hit peak wisdom at age 28, but either way. I'm trying, it, it's from a place of love. I mean, necessarily, I'm trying to I'm trying to give you my limited life experience for uh, that that I think I would have wanted to hear when I was younger. Although I probably would have been like, I'm not taking advice from this guy. He plays YouTube games on the internet. He doesn't even have a master's degree, which might be good advice in general. Maybe I did hit peak wisdom at like 22. I don't know. Mm, I didn't. Uh, by the way, we are fighting, or we're we're on track to fight delirium here and that is a big get because our speed is already like infinity out of 10 um i'm not gonna fight that guy because it could be delirium so we'll just stay away for now but uh i i don't love our odds of going up against delirium here i think our stats are pretty good but i would like to point out we're not in the horror babylon state and our damage is 4.20 which i am trying hard to avoid recognizing as the meme number um we can make it we can make it so I don't <laughs> really love our odds. Monstro's lung uh, gives us a little bit more hurting power, no question. And as does Jacob's Ladder. But Jacob's Ladder is more like room clear than 
single target damage, I think. And I have to say I think, because the run's a little weird. Anyway, this is all... If you want to be cynical about PUBG, dude, I'm cynical about PUBG as well. I'm also a bit of a realist, I think. Um, so I'm like, yeah, you know, it was a great marketing move to say you're going to do early access uh, without doing microtransactions until launch. And then, like, oh, wait a minute, we've sold... 4 million copies, we should probably go back on that. <laughs> if, I'm not afraid to tell you, because I think it's being honest, that if I was the, if I was CEO of Blue Hole, I would be like, you know, I know we said that, but we could also make, like, quite a lot of money, and against what I would consider to be common sense, and it's a little insulting, but a lot of Battlegrounds players are like, you know, totally cool with with the Gamescom crates that were in the game semi recently. But um, so so maybe you're actually giving the consumers what they want, and I can understand how you would be frustrated by that. You're like these these sheep don't even know that they're destroying the industry. But at the same time, you know, mostly I'm I'm a pretty live and let live sort of guy within reason. I think. Even when you might be saying, well, and Al, I hear you, 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 every time you go to the grocery store, you get another anecdote about somebody not behaving to your, you know, societal ideal. Yeah, but I don't think that person should be like, I don't think they're an actual idiot, nor do I think they should be like penalized by the law <laughs> or something. It's just, uh, well, that, that, those are Seinfeld bits, you know? Don't, don't take them to their logical extremes, that's my job. Do -do 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 -do. So the cliff notes of that meandering uh, soapbox was, you know, there's like power rankings for personalities, I think. Genuinely enthusiastic, number one, at New England Patriots, this year, every year. Number two, probably genuinely dismissive, number three, artificially dismissive, number four, artificially enthusiastic. I think I would rather interact with somebody who's regularly uh, semi-intellectually dishonestly negative about things than somebody who's like, oh yeah, chemical warfare? That's really cool. You know, that's <laughs> on like an ethical level, specifically, because I don't know, there's probably cool science involved, as terrible as that sounds. Um, either way, that's, that's the power rankings. I strive in my life to not necessarily be uh, always genuinely enthusiastic, but to not be ashamed. Like, when, when people are like, oh, you, it sounds like your programming class is pretty boring. I'm like, you know, there's parts of it that I don't like that much, but I really like the problem-solving aspect of programming, you know? I'm, I'm taking a JavaScript class, and it's really cool, because I've only ever done object-oriented programming languages, and JS has object-oriented components, like you can create objects, but it's also a more dynamically typed language, which is weird for me. Plus, I've never done, like, almost any HTML or CSS, so I've kind of got a long, like, learning curve ahead of me, trying to figure out, uh, you know, how that stuff is structured. Plus, you know, the part of front-end dev is trying to make things look nice, which I have no skills in, so... You know, it's, it's really fun for me, but also a unique challenge to try to learn that stuff. And there, there you go. You've spun your... The fact that, you know, my first assignment was, Hey, can you submit a web page that has a picture of, uh, you know, a pet or family member on it into something that was a little bit more exciting? You know, people, it's infectious. You could have just been like, Yeah, it kind of stinks, but I want a job one day. That's cool. I want to spend more time with that guy. <laughs> Guy who has no respect for his own time, except he's doing something his parents want him to do. Anyway, I'm not trying to rag on you. Don't don't take that last little bit, by the way, as like me admonishing people who don't know what they want to do with their life. I don't know what I want to do with my life. I'm here. I love playing video games on YouTube. How could you not? First off, I mean there are there are ways, I suppose, but. Um, and it's not all sunshine and roses, but, you know, the duty itself is, like, really nice, in my opinion. But, uh, e even still, like, you know, I'm 28. If YouTube goes up, what do I want to do? I don't know, probably something in the, you know, computer technology field of things, but I don't know if I want to be a, a front-end dev, a database administrator, a, a visionary for AOL or something, who knows? So don't sweat that, that's not what I meant. It's more just like, you know, it shows a great deal of self-respect to do things that you enjoy and to not be ashamed about it. 
That's cool. That's cool stuff. And that goes for anything, by the way. If you're on the if you're a smart guy and you feel guilty about being really good at football in your high school or something, screw that, dude. Love football. It doesn't have to just be dorky stuff that is traditionally societally a little bit shunned. You know, you can still you could be the the guy who's smart but also loves, you know, doing pancake blocks. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Live your true self. I'm very non-self-improvement-y as well, and this is this conversation is making me put that into question. I'm just telling you, you know, to thine own self be true. Okay, we have better damage now. But I don't fully understand whether or not we have a great chance here. I mean, the sad bombs are nice. We got unlimited numbers of them, so that's good. We were very right to not fight Delirium uh, right off the bat, because he, he was in that room. Let's... Give it a try, man. So, you should really, in in my opinion, be throwing down sad bombs like non-stop here. And I'm not going to apologize for it. The sad bombs, the added benefit of sad bombs here is that uh, static tears are going to connect all of our, like, Tammy's head death's touch shots. So they are going to sincerely uh, cover, like, the whole room. Maybe not with a ton of damage, but with enough to, to harass the enemy a little bit and needle them if nothing else. Um, we also, and I haven't been doing a great job of this so far, we should endeavor to an extreme degree to not take damage. Beyond the obvious that you just shouldn't try to take damage in the first place. Um, we don't want to have to, if we lose this fight, we're going to have one HP. And then we're going to have to die to delirium ten times. So, I would prefer to avoid that if possible. We're pretty much on pace to succeed right now when you consider the sun card, but we could do better. Which is what I'm trying to do with the present. Oh, I hit myself with my own bomb, I think, and then got hit immediately after. No. The more we can make, like, the weak enemies that delirium spawns, uh, or becomes, I should say. The more that we can make those eat like an entire sad bomb, the easier our life becomes. Like this guy. Oh my god, I like telefragged myself. Every one of those bombs might be like 5% of his HP if they take the brunt, so... Sure, that's 20 that we have to hit with, but... Every single one, you know, helps us out here. Please spawn more enemies that basically never move. Couple of really good bombs in here, by the way. We, we've equalized our previous errors, I think. <laughs> that was, I thought mom's heart had detached and was flying around the room. Um, Excuse me? He's almost done, dude. That should do it right there. It didn't. Uh, pop the sun card real quick. That might get the kill. It didn't. There we go. And by the way, this was not like a throw. I think we took a lot of damage there we shouldn't have taken, but for the most part, like we were not particularly statted up for this, so... I'm very happy that this worked out. We'd already done that. I think we'd already done that. Well. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Upside a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.